AWS built its own web application firewall and named the service AWS WAF, which is what we're going to talk about in this lesson. The AWS WAF is a web application firewall that gives us control over HTTP requests. It's a managed web application firewall service that integrates with many resources running directly in AWS. You don't have to install any additional software to get it up and running. And on top of that, it provides out of the box managed rule sets for you to use, which we'll also take a look at in this lesson. So you can use it to protect resources like application load balancers, Amazon CloudFront distributions, which is their CDN service, Amazon API Gateway APIs, which is their API management service, AWS AppSync GraphQL APIs, which is their GraphQL service, Amazon Cognito User Pools, which is their customer identity and access management service, and Amazon ECS Containers, which is their Elastic Container Service. It uses three different components. You have Web ACLs, which are Web Access Control Lists that are made up of rules. You have rules, which are statements that define inspection criteria and the action to take if the web request matches that criteria. And you have rule groups, which are reusable groups of rules. We just mentioned how AWS provides managed rules that we can use out of the box, and that's made possible by rule groups that we can use, or we can even create our very own rule groups. So let's take a look at what these rules and web ACLs look like. But first, let's take a quick look at pricing. If you plan on following along with this video, keep in mind that you will be charged a very small amount. AWS WAF incurs additional charges and it works like this. AWS charges for each web ACL that you create and each rule that you create per web ACL. You also get charged for the number of web requests that are processed by the web ACL. And there are also monthly fees that are prorated hourly. So please refer to this page for the latest pricing since AWS may change it after we've recorded this lesson. Now, as of the date of this recording, the pricing is as follows. For web ACLs, they are $5 per month. For rules, they're $1 per month. And then for requests, we have 60 cents per 1 million requests. And there's also something called intelligent threat mitigation, which is an additional cost. This means that if you follow along and you create these resources and then delete them shortly after, you should be charged less than $1. But if you forget to delete them, you may get charged a few dollars for the month. But with that said, feel free to follow along if you'd like, or just watch me as I do it. It's completely up to you. Okay, so let's pull up the AWS WAF service by searching for it. We'll now click on Create Web ACL. And then from there, we'll want to provide a name, a description, and a CloudWatch metric name. We can then select a resource type between CloudFront distribution and regional resources such as ALBs. After that, we can select the region, and this should match the region that we have that resource in or plan to create it in. If you don't have any resources launched that you can associate this WAF to yet, then you can always add that later. We don't have any, so I'm not going to mess with this setting. We're now ready to create our first rules. Let's go ahead and click on add rules. And for the sake of time, we're going to select add manage rule groups, which will give us a list of pre-created rules. From there, you'll see a list of managed rule groups from AWS and from other organizations. Let's expand the AWS managed rule groups. At the very top, you'll see paid rule groups, which are specialized to protect against account takeovers and automated bots. If we keep scrolling, we'll find the free rule groups that we can use, like admin protection, Amazon IP reputation list, known bad inputs, SQL database, etc. Let's select the Amazon IP reputation list by clicking on the toggle next to it, which is labeled Add to Web ACL. We can then minimize this tab and we can click on add rules at the bottom. We'll now see this manage rule group added to our list of rules and we'll see that we've consumed 25 out of the 1500 units for our web ACL capacity. And then below that, we can see the default web ACL action for requests that don't match any rules. And this means that we will allow requests to go through if they don't match any of the rules above. Optionally, you can also add a custom header to each request that was allowed to go through and AWS WAF will automatically prefix the custom header with X Amazon WAF dash. 
Now, if something like a bot is suspected, AWS WAF will ask the client to pass a challenge like a CAPTCHA challenge before it can proceed. And if the client passes that challenge, we may not want to challenge them again if they go to one of our other applications or domains. And so if that's the case, we can add those other app domains under the token domain list. This isn't something that we need to do right now, so let's go ahead and click Next. After that, we'll be asked to set rule priorities. And this is important because the first rules that match will be the ones that get evaluated. This will make more sense in just a moment when we talk about the different rule actions, but let's go ahead and keep moving forward for now. Next, we're able to create CloudWatch metrics. If you've never used CloudWatch before, it's an AWS service that lets you observe and monitor your resources on AWS or on-premises. We will talk more about this as a separate section later in this course, but know that you do get some free metrics and more with CloudWatch as part of your free tier account, and you can find more information here. So if you're following along and you're still part of the free tier, this step should not incur any additional charges. I will leave the defaults and let's go ahead and move forward. We get to review our settings one more time and then we can create our WAF web ACLs. So from there, let's click on the web ACL name. This new screen will display a bunch of useful information, including requests per five minute period and sampled requests, rules, bot controls, if we were to enable it, associated AWS resources, which we don't have any at the moment, but we could easily add them here later on, custom response bodies that let you customize responses to block requests, as well as logging and monitoring, which lets you control overall settings. So let's go back to rules for just a moment. Click on the name of the rules list that we are using. Now I will say that the AWS user interface is quite confusing when it comes to trying to figure out exactly what this rule list does. For example, if we scroll down to rules in AWS Managed Rules Amazon IP Reputation List, we just see that each list's rule action is set to use action defined in the rule, which is not at all helpful. So if we pull up his documentation, we can get a lot more information. We'll see that number one, these rules use the source IP address from the web request origin. Number two, the Amazon IP reputation list rule group contains rules that are based on Amazon internal threat intelligence. And number three, this is useful if you would like to block IP addresses that are typically associated with bots or other threats. Then we see a more detailed breakdown of each list included in this group. But what does the rule action of count mean? We can easily figure out that a rule action of block will block the request, but what about count? An AWS WAF count action will count the request, but it doesn't allow or block it. Instead, it will continue evaluating the rest of the rules to see if any other rule matches the request. This is useful when A, you wanna keep track of how many times this type of request has been counted, and B, it lets you insert custom headers into the request, and you can also add labels that other rules can then match against. So count is more of a passive approach, whereas block would prevent the request and gave a response of HTTP 403, which is forbidden. Allow would permit the request, or we could challenge the requester to check if it's a bot or not. Remember when we talked about rule priorities? Well, this is why it matters. If you have a higher rule priority that blocks a request before it counts it, then it won't be counted. If you want to count that type of request before blocking or allowing it, then you have to set the counting rule as a higher priority rule in order for it to get evaluated. So we've now looked at the core of what AWS WAF offers, but there are other features to consider that we'll just briefly mention and that you can then find in the menu. We have bot control that we've already mentioned, but we haven't enabled due to cost. We have application integration SDKs for additional user telemetry and improved bot detection. We have IP sets to provide a collection of IP addresses and ranges that we want to use together in a rule statement. We have regex pattern sets. We have our own rule groups that we can create. And we have AWS Marketplace resources that we can use. I would like to point out that in the AWS Marketplace, you can find OWASP top 10 rule sets. So if your organization is wanting to set up AWS WAF rules to protect against the OWASP top 10 attacks, then that would be a really good starting point. All right, so now that we're done with these resources, don't forget to delete them in order to stop accruing charges. We can go to Web ACLs in the menu, then select the name and click on delete. From this point on, you will no longer accrue charges for WAF resources. 
So we've just looked at how we can create and configure the AWS Web Application Firewall, which can be used in front of some of our AWS resources, such as CloudFront, the Application Load Balancer, and more. This will oftentimes be our very first or one of the first lines of defenses, and so it is important to understand how it integrates and how it can be configured.